I wasn't surprised that our first hour in Maine was a disaster. I knew if Sheila Tubman was involved, it would be. I begged Mom and Dad to leave right after Dad scrubbed Turtle with this special shampoo called Skunk. But by then, hamburgers were cooking on the grill. So I begged them to leave right after supper. But they wouldn't listen. Don't say I didn't warn you, I told them. I guess we're willing to take our chances, Dad said. Now let's get some sleep. It's been a long day. We carried our bags through the inside door separating our house from Sheila's. But on the other side, there was just a staircase leading to three bedrooms and one bathroom. This is it? I said. This is our house? Yes, Mom said. Isn't it nice? Where's the living room? I asked. Where's the kitchen? We're sharing the living room and kitchen with the Tubmans, Dad said. Sharing? I could hardly get the word out. We're sharing with the Tubmans? Learn to share, Fudge said, and you'll be a very happy person. Don't give me any of your kindergarten philosophy, I told him. This is serious. Upstairs, Mom and Dad looked over the three bedrooms. They chose the one with the double bed for themselves. The second bedroom had a single bed plus a crib. Grandma would share that with Tootsie, which left the smallest bedroom for Fudge and me. You two should be comfortable in here, Dad said. I looked round. There were two camp beds so close together you could kick the person in the other bed. That should be useful if Fudge talks in his sleep, I thought. There was also a lamp and a low chest with two drawers. And the ceiling sloped on one side of the room, so when I stood up straight, I banged my head on it. What about when Jimmy comes? I asked Mom. We'll work it out, she said. Don't worry. But how could I not worry? At least Mom was able to convince Fudge that Uncle Feather would be happier downstairs. We'll put his cage in front of the picture window in the living room so he can watch what's happening, she said. Suppose he has a bad dream, Fudge said. Does he usually have bad dreams? Mom asked, as if Fudge were an expert. Sometimes he dreams of scary monsters, Fudge said, especially if he has to sleep all alone in a strange place. When you cover his cage, he won't know he's in a strange place, I said. He'll know, Fudge said. He's a very well-adjusted bird, I argued. He'll be fine. I wasn't about to share a room with Fudge and Uncle Feather. Even Fudge was too tired to argue. Okay, he said, yawning. Then he flopped on his bed and was out cold before I turned off the light. We went to town the next afternoon. The gears on Dad's bike were stuck, so he dropped it off at Bicycle Bob's shop for repairs. Bicycle Bob is a big friendly guy who wears a t-shirt that says, I'd rather be biking. Then we went to Sawyer's Market for groceries and to the library to get our cards into Oz Books, where Fudge and I each got two paperbacks. After that, we headed for the airport. Grandma's plane was right on time. As soon as we got home, she shook hands with each of the Tubmans and said, Call me Muriel. Then she turned four cartwheels on the front lawn. I could tell the Tubmans were impressed. Muriel, Sheila called, chasing Grandma. Could you teach me to turn cartwheels? I don't see why not. Grandma said, breathing hard. I ran a gymnastics camp for years. Oh, I just love to turn cartwheels, Sheila gushed. My friend Mouse Ellis can turn cartwheels. You have a friend named Mouse? I asked. Mouse, mice, creepy crawly lice, Fudge sang, pleased with this rhyme. Fudgy, Sheila scolded. That's not exactly nice. Then she turned back to me with her hands on her hips. My friend Mouse is coming here in ten days. But that's when Jimmy Fargo's coming. I heard my voice crack, but I didn't care. Jimmy Fargo's coming here? Sheila's voice sounded funny, too. Yeah, for a week. At least. That's the worst news of the century, Sheila cried. The worst news of the century, Fudge said, doing a perfect imitation of Sheila. The worst news of the century. Stop that, Fudgy. Sheila picked him up and shook him. Is that any way to treat your future husband? I asked. <laughs> yeah, Fudge said. Mommy never shakes Dad. We're never getting married if you act that way, Sheila told him. Say you're sorry, or the wedding's off. Are you going to let her boss you around like that? I asked Fudge. Just stay out of this, Peter, Sheila said. Yeah, Pete, Fudge said. Fine, I told him. You want to cook your own goose? Go ahead. Fudge started laughing. I don't have a goose, Pete. 